It's the Dukes versus Duke for the right to go to the Sweet 16. It's a crossover edition of Lockdown Sun Belt and Lockdown ACC. You are Locked On Sun Belt, your daily podcast on the Sun Belt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. All right, welcome to a crossover edition of Locked On Sunbelt and Locked On ACC. We'll get to Candace Cooper from Locked On ACC here momentarily. Today's a bonus episode brought to you by our friends at Nissan. They have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. All right, JMU with a big win over Wisconsin. They get the uh, the vaunted Duke Blue Devils, but not so vaunted this year, right? They're a four seed. That's very unduke like, right? Usually fighting for number one or number two seed. Uh, but they did take care of Vermont in the first round. We bring on locked on ACC's Candace Cooper. Talk about how good is this Duke team? Can JMU shoot themselves into the Sweet 16? And what are the keys to uh, the game? So let's get to it. It's a crossover edition. Locked on Sunbelt and Locked on ACC. All right, welcome back to a crossover edition of Locked on Sunbelt and Locked on ACC. Dave Schultz along with Candace Cooper. So thrilled to have Candace on. Uh, always mocking her having to cover Duke football uh, before my guy from the uh, Fairhope Pirates, uh, Riley Leonard, got there to you know show some what winning football looks like. Uh, but now we're talking basketball. We got uh, round of 32, if you will. The JMU Dukes upsetting Wisconsin. Duke moves on. To play Vermont, Candace. Thanks for for doing this and tell us about this Duke basketball team. I, I it doesn't feel like it's the normal Duke basketball team, right? They're a four seed. Usually, they're fighting for a number one or number two seed. Tell us about this Duke basketball team. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. You know, this Duke team is one that is very much fickle. Sometimes they are the highs of highs and then they can also be the lows of lows. I think this team is definitely run through Kyle Filipowski. Um, When Tyrese Proctor, their guard returned, we figured it was going to be a good one-two punch, but they haven't necessarily gelled as a team well. You've seen freshman newcomer Jared McCain sort of take off in clutch moments during some very high octane games and had some really great performances, but overall, it's Definitely felt like a less inspired Duke team. They haven't really bought into the villain role. And, you know, it, I guess maybe they did buy into the villain role, but didn't realize that you have to play like very inspired and like good basketball as well. So they're having a sort of disconnect. I think Kyle has been in the news sometimes for all the wrong reasons. CC right. court storming, Wake Forest, all of that good stuff. Um, but thankfully has made a recovery and has been able to, you know, finish the season off. Well, didn't have a great performance in their first opening against Vermont, but I think overall this team is certainly one where you can never count them out. They have the weapons. Obviously they have the recruits. I think there's been questions around John Shire, head coach in his third year, kind of figuring out how he's going to make this team better. It's been a little bit inconsistent. Um, I don't think they play as intense as maybe they would with a coach K, but he was finding his way. He's finding a team. Like they were recent ACC champions. So you can't take that away from them in terms of tournament tournament wise, but you know, surviving advance is the name of the game and they're, they're doing just that. All right. So it doesn't seem like it's a typical Duke team because it's usually, you're talking about a one, two punch. Usually there's like three <laughs> or four guys. Right. Yeah. And then, and then whoever comes off the bench and number six man, who, right. you know, Kubek, you know, going back in the day, you know, gets 10 points in like 15 right. minutes. But it really is Kyle Filipowski's team. He's like 12 assists behind from leading the team in points, rebounds, assists, blocks, and steals. So he yes. he averages 2.8 assists a game and Proctor uh, 3.6 assists a game. How can, how does a team try and shut Filipowski down? Because he is the protocol, typical modern big man, right? He is seven foot, about 250 pounds. He can play inside and shoot it outside. Yeah, I think, you know, Vermont showed a good amount to, to that and held him to only three points when they played, but it was just keeping the ball out of his hands. While he is great at rebounding, had 12 rebounds against this uh, Vermont matchup, he certainly wasn't, you know, his power force in terms of shooting it inside or outside. So I think, you know, you get him in foul trouble. I think that's something that he can get him a little bit emotional at times. And so you can probably get him with two or three in the first half and put him on the bench and where, you know, I think Bickerstaff and I also think 
think that um, what is his name? The other one, Jerry. Edwards. Yep. Yes. Uh, well, Ed, Edwards and, and then yes. Jalen. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I think that those guys are going to have a great time, you know, just getting riled up and emotional, I, you know, watching them last night and just seeing how intense they played. I don't see that from Duke necessarily. So if you can just get Kyle sort of flustered and in his own head, I think that's kind of the way you sort of beat him. Uh, we're talking with Candace Cooper from Locked On ACC. I'm Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt. We're previewing uh, the Dukes versus uh, Duke, which is uh, you know, <laughs> funny, I, I guess, <laughs> a little bit. Uh, all right, talk about John Shire because, yeah. you know, like my guy, Adrian Autry at Syracuse, these guys are, you know, replacing legends. And they're right. doing it, trying to, you know, do their own thing. And at the same time, probably in the back of his head is like, what would Mike do, right? Because yeah. that's easier to spell than what would Krzyzewski do. Uh, a thousand percent. So, so it, it, yeah. there's no, and you, you get a Mark Byington who has worked his way up from Georgia Southern uh, to JMU. Rumors have him he's going to West Virginia. So, um, it, it, how, what's going on with Mark Shire? Because there's just there's no learning curve. Uh, right. You know, when you're the head coach of Duke, because if you go, you know, like you said, three years, you go start going four or five, and without being in a Final Four and winning national championship, you know, yeah. the seat gets a little bit hot. Yeah, I definitely think he would have fared better to maybe not start with Duke as your first head coaching position. I think that right. he's very right. basketball IQ is out of the charts, you know, having that brotherhood and understanding what it means to play for the brotherhood. That's all well and good. But in the day, being a head coach is certainly a different beast, right? You have to, you know, kiss the babies and do a lot of the paperwork and a lot more things on the recruiting trail than maybe you did at as an assistant or even at a lower tiered school. You sort of get that privilege of you know earning it and then getting to a place like Duke and really understanding I think that he ultimately is just trying to figure out how to inspire guys that in the Duke system, we've come to know that they're more than likely one and done's or, you know, they try to be one and done's depending on how their season kind of boils out, but he hasn't necessarily, you know, they haven't really had that cachet, you know, as we're used to seeing. Um, so I think he's just struggled with the identity of Duke since the co coach K uh, leave. I think Coach K's ending wasn't exactly, you know, rose colored glasses and, you know, as much fun as people may have wanted, you know, with the whole North Carolina, you know, picking up wins, Final Four and all of that. The exit wasn't great. And so trying to start from there and really like remind folks of who Duke is. Again, winning ACC championship in the tournament is great. But, you know, how do you capitalize on those sort of moments hasn't necessarily been seen in March for Coach Shire. But I, I ultimately feel like he'll find it. It's just that learning curve and that patience level at Duke basketball is certainly slimmer than most. Well, it could be coming next year, right? They, I mean, I think they have like <laughs> yeah. three of the top 10 players coming yeah. in. And, and so next year will be the real test for John Shire because yes. of that recruiting class. All right. So the one, one of the big differences between what, you know, JMU is going to see between Wisconsin and Duke is that Duke is going to play much better defense yes. than uh, Wisconsin. And you, we'll get to the jam. You didn't play all that well offensively against Wisconsin, but it'll be interesting to see. It felt like JMU's defense tried to make Wisconsin aware that they were there. Kind of. Mm -hmm. I, I compared it to like, you know, what the Patriots used to do to the Colts and make sure, you know, you go over the middle, we're going to get a hand on you. We're right. going to put a body on you. And that's what JMU did. And I kind of feel like that's what Duke has always done. It'll be interesting to see you know, because JMU does have more than one guy. They have two, three, four, five guys who can score. Uh, how Duke, you know, makes their presence felt defensively. Yeah, I think they've definitely had some defensive kind of head scratchers. You know, you've seen some like, you know, very critical turnovers, crucial turnovers towards ends of games for Duke. And, you know, either they take over and they're dominant or they, you know, fight tooth and claw and maybe are able to pull them out. But they haven't been, again, I think in one where at this stage in the game, everyone's good, right? You have to play the game. Nobody is sitting here looking necessarily at if you're a six seed, 11 seed, a 12 seed, like you, you're playing with heart. And I think JMU right now is playing very inspired basketball and there's nothing better of course than beating someone of the caliber of Duke so Duke yeah. I think Duke sometimes needs to just remember that the, the front of the jersey but they don't necessarily always play up or to their level of expectation and mm -hmm. I can definitely see them playing like side by side to JMU so they're going to have to figure that out quickly if they don't want to get into a sort of hole that they can't necessarily dig themselves out of offensively all right let's take a time out when we come back we'll preview the JMU side of the ball what do they have to do against Duke to advance to the Sweet 16. Let me tell you about Nissan. This week's March Madness Bracket highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. 
Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the, like any of the all new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The Oakland Golden Grizzlies are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. The team absolutely surprised all of us with a powerful performance in the first round against the Kentucky Wildcats, giving them their biggest win in program history. They say, win life, go rogue. And that's exactly what the Golden Grizzlies have done here. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. And FanDuel. Say goodbye to the busted brackets, although mine are busted, because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet college hoops until they cut down the nets. Wouldn't you know it, I forgot to bet on JMU. The Cajuns baseball game and coming home, I missed it. That's a me problem. Would have helped with the bourbon purchase earlier today. Uh, nonetheless, Dave Schultz on a crossover edition. Uh, locked on Sunbelt, locked on ACC. Let's get back to it with Candace Cooper. Uh, what are what can JMU do to shoot themselves into the Sweet 16? Talking to Candace Cooper, locked on ACC. I'm Dave Schultz, locked on Sunbelt. We're previewing uh, Duke versus JMU in this uh, round of 32 for a chance to go to the Sweet 16. All right, so let's let's talk JMU because defensively they were outstanding against Wisconsin. They got out to an 18 to five a lead, not because they shot it particularly well, but because they kept on turning Wisconsin over. Wisconsin had like five points in the first 10 minutes of the first half. Yeah. And then they scored four points in the last seven minutes of the half. And those were all free throws. So, you know, if JMU puts that kind of uh, results against Duke, they'll be in the game, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the question is, you know, they did not shoot the ball very well. They very easily could have beaten Wisconsin by 20 or 30 points. Uh, Terrence Edwards Jr. had 14 points, but was 5 of 13. Noah Friedel did hit two big threes, one really preventing Wisconsin from coming back. But if JMU can find some rhythm offensively, it'll be interesting to see how Duke, A, it'll be interesting to see who Duke tries to take away. You know, do you go after the the, the head of the snake with, with it being Xavier Brown or Michael Green, the two point guards? Or, you know, you try to you prevent Noah Friedel. Who is their shutdown? That's a good question. Who is Duke's shutdown defensive guy? And who do we put him on? Because uh, I had JMU people after the game, like, could Noah Friedel get into it? And I'm like, well, you got to give Wisconsin credit. They probably tried to take him out of the game. And he was all of two of six. Maybe his shot was off. I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but who would Duke have to try and, sh uh, you know, uh, defend some of the JMU players because that was why I kind of like JMU over Wisconsin kind of stereotypical, you know, Wisconsin's mm -hmm. not going to have the kind of athletes that Duke, Kentucky or Kansas have. Mm -hmm. uh, and so who, who do we think is going to try? Cause it won't be Filipowski. He's going to be inside. Who right. do we think Duke has to try and shut down JMU's offensive threats? And there are at least, you know, there's three of them, two guards and, and the big guy Bickerstaff and or wooden, and carry inside. Yeah, so I think Jeremy Roach definitely with his senior leadership and sort of his uh, def defense will be a key factor for Duke just because he's been in these positions and he can help set up the guys like a Kyle Filipowski if he, you know, however he performs. I think Tyrese Proctor is also going to need to be an incredible defender. Jeremy McCain has moments and flashes. Mark Mitchell is also great at defense. But to me, Jeremy, Jeremy Roach is the one who stands out the most just because of kind of where he's been in these scenarios and understanding like if you can aggravate and if you can frustrate the guard play if you can force them to turn over i think you're you're putting yourself in a good position as a duke team that doesn't necessarily always have the cachet when it comes to offense this season but has certainly been one to where they're gonna they're gonna make you pay for the turnovers so is this one of those games and i'm not even sure if wisconsin ever felt it the other night because they were behind the whole game so i don't think the pressure mounted because uh like maybe against an auburn earlier in the tournament or a kentucky because they, they were never in, in the right. game outside of like a few minute stretch in the second half where they missed a layup to make it four. And then Friedel hits the three. Um, how, how does Duke react? Cause it's a typical, you know, typical Duke team, right? They, 
they don't get if they do lose when they do lose and they have lost eight times that's not that is atypical of duke that yeah. does not happen very often <laughs> right anything more than like three losses is, is a lot for a duke yeah. team but they don't get blown out right they right. lose close ball games because it's duke how do right. they act when, when it does get close uh late I definitely think, you know, I, like I said, being, being critical of John Shire definitely depends on, you know, the second half adjustments. That'll be essential for them as well as just, you know, the guys making head scratching, sometimes freshman young guy mistakes, right? Even freshman and sophomore mistakes. And so, you know, who do you give the ball to? I would trust Jeremy Roach in these sorts of situations just because he's a senior leader and he has definitely put Duke, kept Duke in games and kept them winning and past post um, season runs. So, you know, I, I would trust in him, but overall, I think it's just going to be those mental mistakes can they look past them can they allow for themselves not to get too emotionally caught up and you know have unnecessary fouls can they keep Kyle out of foul trouble that'll be essential so that that would be my keys for sure uh what about I did not see a switch and I know Duke later on mostly probably because of uh you know Beheim's effect on Shashevsky with the Team USA that you know once in a while they would actually play zone mm -hmm. uh does Duke play a zone at all because I don't remember seeing too much zone at all with JMU in Wisconsin. I know JMU will switch up defenses, but I don't think they did it last night because whatever they were doing was working for the most part. Right. Yeah, you know, I, I think for Shire zone sometimes is like that rare treat that we see from Duke, but not necessarily <laughs> one, not necessarily one. I think man man is probably gonna be better for them. And just like the confidence that I feel like they have in Proctor and Jeremy Kane is gonna be one of those essential pieces for them to be locked down defenders. They're gonna have to play big. Um, I think with Kyle, you know, you're not gonna have to you can't let anyone come inside and you really can't anybody steal your lunch. And he's didn't put up the points that we're used to seeing, but we're gonna need to see some jumpers. I don't see think we see too many outside shots but there's he's certainly going to earn every bucket this this go round all right it's candace cooper locked on acc dave schultz locked on a uh, sun belt uh, i would say you know in most cases right outside of duke fans everyone's going to be rooting for jmu but <laughs> uh they are playing in brooklyn which is basically duke's home away from home yes. from durham north carolina it's not the garden but they are playing that's close enough new york city mm -hmm. all those dukies who you know from the upper east and west side that go to you know, Duke <laughs> to get yeah. out of the weather, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, will be there. What, what kind of, it, it will, do you think it will be a Duke uh, home court advantage? How, you know, compared to what it would have been if this was maybe in Chicago or Kansas city, yeah, so when I saw, you know, JMU last night, I feel like their fans traveled really well. So I think it will yeah. be a good mix. Uh, I think in terms of just wanting to be, I mean, how many people can say they've seen Duke basketball up close and personal, especially in a right. place like Brooklyn? So sure. I think it'll be evenly distributed, but I do know that Duke has a strong, strong brotherhood up there yeah. in the New York area, and uh, there are going to be plenty of fans. And But ultimately, they are, like I said, we've we talked about them being that villain team, and people love nothing more than to see the villain get taken down. So will that mean inspiration for them? Who knows? But if there was ever a time to kind of find it, this certainly is it. You got a lot of guys in the NBA from Duke who think that they can make, you know, run. I know Paolo Bencaro has been one who's really high on the Blue Devils feeling like they've been sort of underrated and under, you know, kept under, under the radar this season. But, you know, to be in an environment where, you know, it's playing inspired basketball, Duke's going to need all of that mojo, that extra magic to kick in, which, you know, sometimes they struggle with. Sometimes they struggle with the emotional side of the game and getting really excited or playing up. So they, they can, they're going to have to play to their potential and more if they're going to be a really good JMU team. At the same time, do you think JMU can get psyched out? Do teams get psyched out playing Duke anymore? Is that a thing? Because I know it certainly used to be. Yeah, I, I don't think that it's a thing anymore. I think, you okay. know, like you said, eight losses, certainly they, they feel very beatable. The, the teams that they have lost to, like the Georgia Techs of the world, right? It's just been like, yeah. all right, well, you know, they, they got some guys who just come in and say, hey, I have to play a run. And I think in this culture that we have now, more AAU, where you're probably playing some of your best friends who are on a circuit, they just happen to go to, you know, a higher seated team or things like that. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, putting on putting on the jersey, lacing them up and giving them a good run. So I don't, I don't see them being a threat at all. And I think that that's probably what's going to make JMU pretty hungry. All right, before we wrap it up here with Candace Cooper to tell you how much I'm following ACC basketball, how long has Damon Stoudemire been at Georgia Tech? When, when did that become a thing? I'm like, you know, wasn't he just in the NBA? Yes, this is his first season. Um, okay. and he's had it played a very inspired uh, Georgia Tech team after Coach Passner was let go. And I think right. that they're they're probably, if you talk about ACC schools, one to watch out for. They're a very young team, but they they have some scrappy ones. They beat Duke and North Carolina. So, yeah, mm. I think that, that Duke is, 
definitely a team that they've known they've been beat by those underdogs. And so they understand that at the end of the day, people want to beat them. Can they, can they prove themselves worthy? That'll be interesting. All right, let's take a time out. When we come back, we'll wrap things up with Candace Cooper locked on ACC. What are the keys to the ball game? Let me tell you about Amazon fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, and Major League Baseball, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. I do have it. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. All right, let's wrap things up. Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, our crossover episode previewing uh, the Dukes versus Duke with a Locked On ACC's Candace Cooper. What are the keys to this ball game coming up on Sunday afternoon? All right, so wrapping things up with Candace Cooper, Locked On SEC. I'm Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt. Candace, give me two keys to the game for Duke to come out victorious. Yeah, Kyle Filipowski is going to have to have a better game than he did against Vermont from an offensive standpoint. I think rebounding is great, but putting in maybe some offensive rebounds that puts it back up. I think capitalizing on turnovers for him or even just putting his team in position to where, you know, they can put the game away early is certainly going to be helpful. I feel like if you're getting in a dogfight with JMU, it's not going to necessarily go in the favor of Duke, but I will say that for someone like Kyle who said their sights are set on things bigger, this is kind of how you prove yourself. You're getting into that Sweet 16 Elite 8 Final Four conversation and being that Duke of old or at least caring to where you feel like this team should be is going to be essential for him to sort of prove that. Um, another key I, w- I would say will be Jeremy Roach, right? That senior factor, that senior leadership, especially in this tournament against an inspired and very good scrappy JMU team. He's going to have to keep the emotions kind of settled and make sure that the guys don't get too overwhelmed by the moment, but are still able to play their games offensively and really be locked down in defense. All right. So a couple of uh, uh, points for, for JMU, uh, they're going to have to come out and play that kind of defense again, which was amazing. And it'll be interesting to see if it gets a little chippy uh, mm-hmm. because they were allowing a lot of contact uh, early on in that ball game. Uh, and as we saw, JMU could get emotional and, you know, you get emotional in the wrong guy's face and we'll see if there is, you know, a lot of emotion on, on the court, but they're going to have to come up with something pretty good. I kind of felt like JMU made Wisconsin aware that they were there and they'll probably try to do the same thing with Duke. The difference is I think Duke is going to make sure that JMU is aware that, that the Dukies are there. Um, and at the same time, I said, JMU needed to hit 10, three pointers against Wisconsin. (laughs) Um, they hit five. If JMU hits five three pointers against Duke, they ain't winning the game. They, they have to hit somewhere between eight and 10. I'll give myself a range this time. They need to hit between eight and 10, uh, three pointers, uh, to have a shot in this ball game. And and if they do, if they hit eight to 10, three pointers, they will be in the ball game, whether they win or not, that means they probably hit 12 or 14, but that's, that's what I think. Once, if they can get to double digits in three pointers, uh, I think they'll, they'll give Duke a, a run for their money. The line came out, I guess at one point in time, it was six and a half. I saw it seven. It's Duke seven and a half. I guess it was going to be seven or eight. I think that's probably where it belongs. Mm-hmm. Give me seven points in JMU. I'm taking the Dukes. Oh, every single time. I think that, you know, Duke, a Duke team, this is going to come down to the wire. I think it's going to come down to two or two or more, two or less possessions. And go. the team that comes out on top, I think the one that can keep either Kyle Filipowski in foul trouble or the one that allows Kyle, Kyle Filipowski to get going. She is Candace Cooper, locked on ACC. Who's the Duke starting quarterback this year? 
Who is the Duke's new quarterback? <laughs> I, need, I need to talk to Manny Diaz. I haven't, haven't been <laughs> dialed into that one. I'll, I'll have to circle back because I am I'm not, not quite sure, to be honest with you. I'm not sure Manny Diaz sure is sure <laughs> right now. That I think that's the issue. Uh, yeah. She's Candace Cooper, locked on ECC. I'm Dave Schultz, locked on Sunbelt. Should be a heck of a ball game. I think it's a 4-15 uh, Eastern time zone game. Uh, didn't get the prime time. Some other ones did that, but it should be a whale of a game. Candace, yeah. thanks for doing the uh, Locked On crossover episode. Really appreciate it and enjoy the basketball. Thank you. Same to you, Dave.